They've got three small children, all of which are super excited, and they thought they were getting a bathtub. So I think anything we do larger than a bathtub <laughs> blow their mind. Should, yeah, should blow their mind. Yeah, because there's such thing as an excessive amount of circulation. Nope. Nope. Not in ponds. You haven't seen it before. I haven't. Right, but you're also 12, so. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Good morning, everybody. It's Brian with Team Aquascape. I am out here with my good friend, Jay Duke from Rivercrest. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Jay Duke, I'm a retired law enforcement officer from South Carolina. I have an incredible opportunity to come out and work with Brian on this project we've been talking about for like, almost a year. Yeah, it seems like uh, a long time. Long time and just incredible family. Gonna make, this is gonna be just the most awesome addition to their backyard. They've got three small children, all of which are super excited about getting in here and playing around in this Absolutely. pond and they thought they were getting a bathtub so i think anything we do larger than a bathtub should blow their mind should, yeah should blow their mind they not only get a bathtub with a sand beach they get a bathtub with a bridge they get a bathtub with a waterfall they get a bathtub with a kind of interactive intake bay area yeah, let's let's don't even call it a waterfall let's turn this around and show all right, yeah, right. this area look at the entrance the height difference from your truck coming down here jay go stand over there really quick so part of that wall is going to get cut out and waterfall is coming down this hill into here. It's gonna be absolutely, that's every kid's dream. Big. Heck, it's my dream. <laughs> so we get to do a big 37 by 20 foot pond with the sand beach, with some other bells and whistles, with jets and that kind of stuff. Uh, nice wetland filter, all kinds of waterfalls. This is gonna be awesome. You guys know the first step. Let's get at it and start digging. Here we go. It. It's day two out here in Barrington. Yesterday we said we were gonna dig because that's always the first step in any pond construction. And here's what we've got. Yes, it's a little bit different. So this is gonna be a big sand beach type player area. We're gonna try to do something special in there so it's not just sand. Give it a little bit more excitement. Maybe there's a drilled out boulder. Maybe there's a bowl with some water coming out of it. Who knows? We've got our deep area over in here. You can see right off the patio, we're going straight down four feet. We've got a little kind of a trough trench dug in down there at the bottom. We're going to use some wall stone in here. Fabric and liner is going to form to this. We then put fabric on top of the liner, then some base material, and then we can use that base material to level off our wall and get our wall perfectly level with this existing patio. Now this is not going to be their finished patio. They're going to come over the top of this with a veneer and do something nice right over the top of it. Over in here we've got some shelves where we can just kind of stair step up some bigger boulders. Definitely going to get a waterfall.
waterfall coming in over there. That white line is where we're gonna kind of cut out the wall and bring that waterfall through that existing wall down into here. We had the pond marked out into here. We're choosing not to dig the entire pond all out at once because if we do, we're gonna really limit our machine access for setting a lot of these big boulders. And speaking of boulders, first load of boulders just came. So hopefully they got our wall stone so we can get going on that wall right away and then some of our character boulders. Um, I believe there's six total loads of stone coming out here today. So let's go check out that truck and see what we got. And there's a machine up here by the stone, it's usually because there's a problem. Looks like that pallet probably busted and we had to help unload. So some really awesome Pieces. We're gonna do this pond in a combination of weathered limestone and moss rock. There's our wall stone, and hopefully there's a bag someplace on there with some base material. But look at how beautiful that weathered limestone is. I remember picking this piece out specifically at the stone yard because of the little ledge right there. 100% we'll get a waterfall coming off of that. And then some of these tall skinny ones are nice, but they take up so much space. This big boy, 100%, will probably go down into the pond and cover part of that big four foot wall. Oh, yes! Hey Moose, say hi! Hi! <laughs> Moose has been our driver from Illinois Brick forever, for as long as I can remember. The guy could care less about how tight areas are and will always accommodate anything we need. Big shout out to Moose and Illinois Brick. So we got our rock, we've got our wall stone, big section of the pond is dug. We're gonna come in, kind of clean up any big gravelly areas, get our rock pad down, and then throw some liner in and get rocking this thing in. Hey guys, thanks for watching. You know what to do. Tell everybody, never mind. Just keep watching. <laughs> All right, guys, we're ready. We cleaned up the bottom as much as we could. We've got our thick, thick rock pad we're putting down. You can see how thick this stuff is. We love to use it on these rocky soil type conditions. And this is one of those projects where no matter how much scrape away, <laughs> scrape, scrape away the rocks, more rocks just show up. So at some point it's just useless. So what isn't is doubling this stuff up. So we're gonna put down two layers of this fabric, especially in the areas we know we're gonna put some big boulders. You can see this peculiar little trench that we have in here it's gonna be yeah, peculiar odd strange trench we have here we're gonna run a jet system through this entire pond and we're gonna run all the plumbing inside the pond so we're gonna have a three inch pipe that comes up through here over the top of the liner again we'll try to show you that as we're doing it but we're gonna have two jets shooting out from here a bowl spilling water in here a waterfall over there jets up the wall and jets shooting across the bottom everything pushing pushing, pushing over into what will later be a bridge over there and the intake bay back behind it. That should give this pond an excessive amount of circulation. And Jack, is there such thing as an excessive amount of circulation? Nope. Nope. Not in ponds. You haven't seen it before. I haven't. Right, but you're also 12, so. Yeah. <laughs> some point. All right, guys, let's get that fabric liner in and we'll start dropping some boulders in place. Here we go. Strapping the liner. So how do you move a 40 by 50 foot liner with four guys? Try to be work smarter, not harder. So Jack, you see how it's falling off over here? Widen up those straps. Anyways, what we've done is we rolled the whole 50 foot out from there all the way to here. Probably see that from our GoPro footage. Rolled it all the way out and then folded it in this way, folded it in this way, and then back and then back and back and back and then folded it like this. Right. Fabric liner. Fabric done. Boom! <laughs> Jack's excited. I think we're all excited. At this point, you know, the digging, as glamorous as it all may look, isn't nearly as much fun as you would think. <laughs> it's really coming to set the boulders and everything else. And so if you look down here, there's that trench. I don't know if you guys remember it from before. 
You can see our liner forms do it, our fabric forms do it, then we put our base material down. The reason we put the base material down is not so much that we need a base because of freeze, thaw, and all that kind of stuff, where Jay's sitting is way, way below frost line. So we don't worry about that. In fact, the ice would never, ever get more than six to eight inches thick here in the Chicagoland area, especially on this small pond. But we use the base material, like I said before, to fine tune what the height of that stone needs to be at, because we need this stone wall that's gonna come in through here to match up exactly with the finished grade of that patio there. So we've got that in there. We'll get that all leveled off. And then you notice this rock and this rock. We set those because think of them as like end caps to a bookshelf. I need some place to terminate that wall. That still looks pretty. And this stone is not the prettiest on the side. So we set these, that way we can match our stone right up to it, cut it to fit around it. And then as we move up layer by layer, we'll add more stone, more end caps on a bookshelf, if you will. So here we go. Let's build a wall. Oh, my God. 